हॅलो एव्हरी वन दिस इज डॉक्टर सतीश एस बोरणारे डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जेनेटिक्स अँड प्लॅन बिल्डिंग के के बाग कॉलेज ऑफ अग्रिकल्चर नाशिक टुडे वी आर गोईंग टू लर्न द टॉपिक प्लॅन्ट जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेस सो फ्रेंड्स होल लायब्ररी ऑफ डिफरंट अलिस ऑफ अ स्पेसीज इज नोन ॲज अ जीन पूल अँड द सम टोटल ऑफ द हेरिडेटरी मटेरियल ऑर जीन्स प्रेझेंट इन अ स्पेसीज विथ इट्स वाईल्ड रिलेटिव्ह is known as germplasm of that species or a, in a broad space it is a plant genetic resources the germplasm or gene pool is the basic material with which a plant breeder has to initiate his breeding program so the first step of a plant breeding is to create a variability then select a useful plant material so for creating variability we have a large genotype with us and this plant genetic resources play a important role for creating a variability or trap of variability exist in the nature so these are the important uh, resources for a breeder so what are the different importance of the plant genetic resources uh, so the plant genetic resources represents entire genetic variability or a diversity available in a crop species and this consists of all different kinds of the plant genetic resources such as land uh, races obsolete cultivars mutants breeding lines advanced lines uh, etc and these plant genetic resources may be indigenous or uh, exotic so this is the basic material for launching a crop improvement program and these plant genetic resources are collected from centers of diversity gene banks farmers fields markets and seed, seed companies wherever there is uh, availability and these plant genetic resources includes both cultivated and wild species or re- wild relatives of a crop plants by this diagram we can see and we can analyze that these plant genetic resources are the building blocks and the fundamentals not only in the crop improvement program but also for the very survival of the species in time and space so this is the beauty of plant genetic resources and how important these are so there are different kinds or types of plant genetic resources for sake of simplicity these are the classified into three types basic genetic resources derived genetic resources and genetic resources at molecular level this is the advanced one so the basic genetic resources are present as such in the nature for example wild taxa related to the crop species then weedy forms of the crop plants and the land races or the primitive cultivars well in case of derived genetic resources these are absolute varieties these are the recent past of the recent past varieties of the cultivated varieties then breeding lines advanced cultivars pre breeding materials mutants and cytogenetic stocks or testers and parents of hybrid varieties we we'll later on go in detail with this here is the just um, overview of the classification or different types of uh, plant genetic resources and last one is uh, dna libraries in vitro means different dna libraries we prepared in lab or in vitro now we can see or we can go in detail with different the famous type of plant genetic resources or different types of plant genetic resources first one is a land races these are the primitive cultivars which were selected and cultivated by the farmers for many generation so these are the important for us and the primitive varieties which had evolved without a systematic and sustained plant breeding effect as we said discuss earlier these are the natural one and they are the storehouse of the genetic variability and adapted to the local soil type and climatic condition etc they evolved under this subsistence agriculture they have a broad genetic base provide wider adaptability and provides high degree of resistance to the biotic and abiotic stresses the only main drawback of these land races are that they are less uniform and low yield besides that they are having all the good characters so we can easily or we can 
use this land resources as a reservoir for our today's breeding program. Second one is obsolete varieties. Obsolete varieties are the improved varieties of the recent past are known as obsolete varieties or cultivars. These varieties are developed by systematic breeding efforts, once commercially cultivated but, not, but no more grown today. So the examples are wheat varieties like K65, K68 and PB591. These are the examples of obsolete varieties which were going by farmer for um, recent fast. The third one is a modern cultivar or varieties in cultivation. These are the currently cultivated high yielding varieties referred as a modern cultivars. So cultivar means the cultivated varieties. They are easily used in the plant breeding program. It is a major part of working collection. They are good source of gene for yield, quality, uniformity, etc. However, they have narrow genetic base and low adaptability as compared to the land races. So, in case of land races, we have already seen that they are having broad genetic base as well as having wider adaptability. In, in contrast to the modern cultivars, the modern cultivars are good for yield quality and uniformity but having the drawback of narrow genetic base and low adaptability. Fourth one is breeding lines. These are the pre-release lines, populations, cultures, stocks developed through the scientific breeding program by the breeders or his own research. They contain valuable gene combinations and include nearly homozygous lines, mutant lines, transgenic lines and lines derived from biotechnology programs. So these are the very helpful lines for the breeders. Next one is the wild farm and wild relatives. Wild farm are the wild species from which crop species were directly derived are called as a wild farm. Wild, wild relatives includes all other species which are related to that particular crop species by descent during their evolution. This is the major difference between wild form and wild relatives and these both are easily crossed with the crop species as their ancestry is common and they are much more difficult to hybridize with the crop species due to their evolution pattern. Both of these groups are sources of valuable genes for insect and disease resistance tolerance to abiotic stresses like drought, cold, salinity, etc. and even for the quality traits and yield. So these wild farm and wild relatives are very important plant genetic resources for a today's perspective because our today's varieties are prone to the abiotic stresses or biotic stresses and here the wild farm and wild relatives are the only hope to cope up with this situation. Next, sixth is the mutants. When the desired character is not found in genetic stocks of cultivated species and their wild relatives, mutations can be induced through the use of physical and chemical mutagens to create the extra variability which is the important component of the gene pool and these mutants are the benefited with one or few characters which are going to be improved. So these are the another important plant genetic resources. Now, the classification of gene pool. The gene pool is classified into the three forms that is primary gene pool GP1, secondary gene pool that is GP2 and tertiary gene pool that is GP3. So this primary gene pool is includes strain and species which hybridize easily with each other and gives the fertile hybrids. And it includes plants of a same species of, or of closely related species which produce completely fertile offspring on the intermediate. So this is the primary gene pool and each which produce a fertile hybrid. The secondary gene pool is the genetic material that leads to partial fertility on crossing with gene pool 1 is referred as a secondary gene pool. It includes plants that belong to related species, means related to that particular crop species and members of this gene pool 2 hybridize with member of gene pool 1 with considerable difficulty and produce a partially fertile hybrids. Third one is a tertiary gene pool. These uh, gene pools uh, is the genetic material which leads to production of sterile hybrids on crossing with primary gene pool is, is termed as a tertiary gene pool or GP3. The members of gene pool 3 cross with members of gene pool 1 with a great difficulty and produce hybrids which are invariably sterile. So to tackle this problem, we have to design a specific breeding program to cross this uh, tertiary gene pool with the primary gene pool and tackle the problem of 
invariably sterile hybrids. So these are the different classification of the gene pool. So as we see the plant genetic resource is very useful and it is needed a prerequisite to start a breeding program or to cope the various problems of the breeding program. But due to the some reasons this valuable plant genetic resources is going to be eroded and that is called as genetic erosion. That means the gradual loss of variability in the cultivated species and the wild forms and wild relatives is called as a genetic erosion. So the genetic erosion is takes place due to these some reasons we can see over here and discuss one by one. First one is a replacement of genetically variable land races that is DC varieties which are having a broad genetic base as well as having the resistance against insect and pest by improved genetically uniform pure lines or hybrid variety. This is the major cause to uh, erode or genetic erosion of these valuable PGRs. Second one is elimination of weedy forms of the many crops due to improved crop management practices. As we all know that our uh, today's improved crop management practices uh, disturbs or eliminate the weeds form of the most of the crops. Then third one is a destruction of habitat of most wild species due to extended farming and grazing forest. This is another major problem which leads to the genetic erosion of PGR. Next one is a disturbance to the wild habitat due to development activity like hydroelectrical projects, roads, industrial areas, railways, building, etc. So due to the, these different developmental activities, this genetic erosion is going to happen. Next one is an accidental introduction of BD species may result into invasion of native wilds relative of crop plants from their habitat. So while introduction some of the weedy form is introduced unavailably and which result into the invasion of native wild species due to the another this is the another mechanism through which different crop plants and their wild relatives get eroded or extincted from the resources so these are the some of the causes of the genetic erosion so friends, we are now seeing that the plant genetic resources are the very valuable for a breeding program and crop improvement perspective. And there are some reasons to erode or extinct the plant genetic resources. We have to need to conserve these plant genetic resources. So why there is a need to conserve these plant genetic resources? First one is to minimize the damage by major diseases and insects, to control the new biotypes of the pest. To tolerate adverse environment, drought, adverse soil factors, excess soil water and extreme temperature and pollution. To extend cropping into the new areas or new environment. To improve physical quality and nutritive quality. To increase the physiological efficiency in dry matter and grain production. To e exploit useful genes gathered from the land races, weed races and wild races. So these are the some points that emphasize the need to conserve the plant genetic resources. So thank you friends, this video is for educational purposes only and the references are as given below. Thanks once again.